Hey everyone, welcome to this video. Uh, in this video, we're gonna check out another plugin for After Effects called Midas. Midas is actually offered by Mount MoGraph. I've reviewed or looked at another plugin by Mount MoGraph called Motion version two. You can check that out on our channel. And also just check out Mount MoGraph. They have tons of awesome tutorials as well as the plugins that they offer. But today in this video, we're gonna be checking out the plugin Midas. So quick intro on what Midas is. Really, this kind of lends itself more to just pure motion graphics. Kind of like Motion 2, there's so much functionality to Midas, but it's kind of more of like an efficiency workflow thing when it comes to animating especially, and when it comes to motion graphics. Okay, so Midas is here. It is just a panel in After Effects. And what's really cool about Midas, as you can see when I expand here, it uh, kind of scales. All the icons with inside scale with it. You'll see there's nine icons here. So the the top six here, they're all their own tools. But if you click on labs, you'll see there's a bunch of additional tools in there. And this one, labs here, is kind of cool. It's kind of constantly updated. So Midas will get software updates and there will be more and more tools. When I first got Midas, there were only two tools in the labs. There are now six. So pretty cool that Midas is something that you're continually getting software updates without having to pay anything more. What's also kind of neat with this, another kind of usability plus for Midas, is you just simply take your cursor off of the panel and it'll bring you back. So for example, if I go into options here and then into the about section, I can go back once and then I can go back twice. Speaking of options, you'll see this archive of messages. These basically came with all the software updates or sometimes there's even just project files for tutorials that Mount MoGraph offers um, directly in Midas. So kind of like a next level plugin here. You can change the interface. So just a really sweet UI, a really sweet setup and just usability for Midas. Really awesome, just all the functionality, functionality simply built in just to the Midas panel. Okay, so let's check out what Midas can actually do. The meat and potatoes of Midas, as you might guess, is the first tool here called Midas. Okay, so you'll see I have a cube here. We can animate just its position if we want. Go ahead, 20 frames animate it and we could just add some easing to that. All right, so we now have this cube going left to right. Now Midas is for when you have multiple instances of a layer and you want them all to follow the leader, like parenting, right? So I'll just duplicate this maybe four times. So we now have five layers. I'm already in the habit of using Midas actually because I kind of want to reverse these and Midas has a tool for that. Normally you drag them all around and that's kind of annoying, but if you just select them all, go into your labs and hit reverse, now they're in the opposite order. Very handy. So this is the process of using the Midas tool in the Midas plugin. You can do it on any property, but you select a property of one layer, then select the rest of your layers, and then hit Midas. And we don't need to worry about any of the options down here. And now you'll see that all the other layer, all the other squares are following this first layer. So pretty cool. And you'll see I got some controls up here. You can set the delay. So right now it looks like this. If I put the delay to like 100 and play that back, we're gonna have to stretch this out a bit. You'll see that they all go take a bit longer. The delay between it, each layer moving is longer. And you can also set additional settings. So you have drag and scatter here. So drag, if I enable this, allows you to kind of enable, you'll see there's a seed here. Whenever you see seed in After Effects, that's kind of like a randomization tool. So if I enable drag, that's gonna offset or randomize the temporal values. So temporal meaning the timing of, of when layers move. You can set any parameters to that. So I could put like minus 30 and 30 here, and now it's gonna offset the timing of the layers to go, you know, a factor of 30 too early and a factor of 30 too late. It'll be easier to see maybe if I put this down to like 20 again. So you can see that it's kind of randomized. Some of them are going too soon and some of them, like this very first one has quite a delay and then all these three go really quick. There is also a scatter which has a similar effect but it's not for timing, it's for spatial interpolation. So 
Scatter is, you'll see here, if I enable scatter, I'll just turn off the drag for now. I can scatter the positions of Y, so I can drag it down and also drag it up. So we have uh, two parameters there, and I could do left and right as well. So some of them are going to actually finish in front of and behind. So pretty cool. I think you can already see some cool effects happening here, and you can kind of see how Midas is just crazy powerful. Really handy to have these tools. Additionally, you'll see uh, the advanced section here with dynamics. Dynamics enabling this is basically adding a wiggle to whatever property you applied it to. So in this case, it's gonna add a wiggle effect to position. First, I'm gonna um, toggle off scatter. So we're back to normal here. If I turn on dynamics, it's just gonna continually kind of wiggle in its, its own default settings. You can adjust the frequency and the amount. So I could put this you know, up to 10, it's gonna shake really fast. I could put this down to only like 30 and it's just gonna jitter really quickly around. So kind of cool there. Advanced Dynamics, basically a wiggle effect. So that's Midas, the Midas tool within the Midas plugin. And just to give you an idea of what you would have to go through to get this effect without Midas, it's kind of a lot of work. I know of kind of two ways to get this. One is using an effect and one is using an expression. So you'll see here, I have a null object and all these layers are following the top layer, similar to Midas but using expressions. So you'll see I have a delay expression in position and you can get a similar effect like that, but it becomes very difficult to customize it and change the parameters. Uh, Midas makes that a lot easier and this is just not as functional. There's not as much control here and you have to deal with expressions and uh, who likes dealing with expressions, right? And then there's also the echo effect, which you can find in your effects and presets. If I type in echo here, whoops, echo, you'll see it there. So if I apply echo to, oh, I already got it here, to this layer, you know, originally we just have the square. If we put echo, we can get a similar effect. So a couple other ways to get it, but again, um, Midas is, you know, gives you, you know, these extra controls with the ranges, with, this, with the random seeds, just kind of a nicer way to, to get that effect. Okay, moving on. So next up we have Echo here. Echo basically just duplicates a layer for you. So not really much point to this that I see. If I just delete all this, create a circle there. So if I select my layer and click Echo, you can drag this to, so if I wanna duplicate it, you know, seven times, it's gonna duplicate that layer seven times for me. So just a quick way to get duplicates of a layer. Grab is awesome, you're about to see here. I've used this many times in the past. So Grab allows you to grab a, a property of multiple layers at once without having to open up each layer and clicking on each property. So saves a bunch of time. If I go into say my first layer here and I select size, and I wanna select size of all the layers cause I wanna affect that property in all my layers at once, rather than having to you know, select size uh, for all my layers and shift click. I can just do it on the first layer, then grab all the other layers and hit grab. And now you, if you double tap S on your keyboard, you'll see that size has been selected for all the layers. So that's awesome. Okay, cloth. Cloth is kind of more of a very specific tool dealing specifically with puppet pins. So. If I add, you know, four pins here, select my layer and hit cloth. Uh, we'll just call the system cloth. If I put on dynamics here and play this, you'll see that cloth basically takes control of your puppet pins and allows you to control them using the Midas tools. So puppet pins aren't the easiest thing to access sometimes and control, they can get a bit wonky but uh, Midas kind of does a cool job of giving you this effect. I've never really used this to be honest, but if you wanted you know, this kind of effect and you wanted to just get it super quick, a uh, cool way of doing that. So cool that Midas has that. I'm not sure what the expression error here is. It seems to be working. 
Okay, moving on, we have Animo. So what Animo allows you to do is basically take multiple properties in a single layer and consolidate those keyframes to only two sets of keyframes. So you're now controlling multiple properties with only one property. So we have position and rotation happening here. This cube is rotating up and moving up. So I could select both these properties, hit Animo. We'll hit key here and you get another layer here. We'll call this Animo. And you get another layer here with two keyframes. And now these keyframes have actually taken over. So I can stretch these way out. And you'll see that the animation is now being controlled by these keyframes. So this is kind of similar to as if you would have pre-composed and then did like a time remap on a layer. And then also Animo has kind of a cool thing. This is again something I've never used and kind of have a hard time seeing what this would be useful for. But it's also so out of the ordinary that if you did use this in one of your projects, people might be like, how did you do that? <laughs> um, it's kind of cool. So it's when you get into the specter uh, property here of Animo. So the first thing we need to do here is create another layer. So I'll just create a circle here and center up that anchor point. And we'll just put it here. I'm just gonna call this trigger. So if I go into my animal layer, I enable specter and I set my trigger layer to the layer called trigger. Don't have to call it trigger, but. So we have two new layers here. We have the null and we have our layer that we created ourselves. As we move this layer into the area of the null, you'll see that it actually triggers our animation to happen. I'm going to actually put this layer behind our yellow square. And you'll see that depending on how much our layer, our trigger layer, covers up the null, the surface area of the null, that will trigger the animation to happen. So if you actually look at what's happening here, you can see that currently 57% of our null layer is covered up by our big green circle. So that then uh, tells um, Animo to animate 57% of the animation. You can also change the size of your null. So if I change the scale of my null, you can also do that. And then as soon as the circle hits it, it begins to animate the yellow square. So this is something that potentially you could get some pretty cool effects with, but not the most easy to see right off the bat how you might use that. But moving on, uh, we now have vector. So vector, I won't actually demonstrate for vector, but basically it creates lines, white lines connecting any layers that you select. So you could have a bunch of dots, uh, you select them, hit vector, and they're all gonna be connected by lines that will stay connected as you animate. Kind of a similar effect to nulls following shape paths. You can get a similar effect with that. I actually did a video on that. If you haven't checked it out, uh, you can check it out. So we're almost done here, uh, but moving on, Labs has a bunch of cool things. So again, we don't have to get into every single one of these. I'll just quickly go over them. Reverse we already saw, which reverses the order of layers. Break will break apart a text layer and actually create a bunch of individual layers for each letter of the text so really uh, useful useful thing there trace is an interesting thing it's almost like a particle generator effect an interesting particle generator there I've never used it dynamic basically takes that effect that we saw in midas if you recall that when i applied midas you got this advanced dynamics which allowed you to have like a wiggle to the layer that's what dynamic here is it's basically adding just that dynamics property without the whole midas um, tool being applied kind of going all over the place here but parent basically just parents layers to other layers so you can select a group of layers hit parent and they all get parented to the one either directly below or directly above depending on how you want to do it. As you can see here, you can parent up or parent down. And then lastly, we have trim. And trim basically just adds a trim path property to the layer. Potentially, you know, a couple seconds quicker than adding trim paths the normal way. That's basically Midas. The meat and potatoes, again, the main part of Midas is the actual Midas plugin. And then just a summary of what, I've had this for a couple of years. I've actually used that in, in a couple of videos. Once you know you have it, at this kind of really powerful next level parenting tool on steroids almost, uh, once you know you have that, you almost kind of want to parent things and create multiple instances of a layer 
just because you know you have all this new power over that and you're like, man, I'm just gonna use Midas because I can really quickly create some really cool looking graphics here um, where a bunch of things are following each other either exactly or you know, following each other exactly but with a little bit of offset. It looks like you did a lot of work to get you know, a particular animation done but really you used Midas and you did it in like five seconds. So really cool tool. And then as well, you know, I find myself using the grab tool a lot and in labs, you know, the break has come in handy a lot of times as well as reverse. That is it, that is Midas. Hopefully you could see the benefit of having it. Uh, I believe it's another like $30, $40 uh, plug in again. I remember it wasn't too much. I don't have any relationship with them. Um, I'm not trying to promote Mount Morgraph. I've just got so much use out of their tools being Motion 2 and Midas. And as well as another plugin, uh, Boombox, a sound effects plugin has been great. I should do a video on that in the future. But Matt Mograph has just offered so much value, I think, to a lot of people out there. And uh, so I'm just kind of trying to spread the knowledge that this is available. And again, thank you for watching. If you want to check out more videos on our channel, we're coming out with more and more videos these days, tutorials, uh, gear reviews, and just video production in general. And don't forget to uh, like the video, subscribe to our channel, uh, leave a comment if you have any questions. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.